this is my happy place. As much as I love golf, that's work. And even when I leave the golf course and go home and I'm not playing a tournament, you're still thinking about your golf swing. But when I come fish, there's nothing else I think about. And it's literally just me in the river thinking about catching a fish and your mind just kind of goes blank. People just see us inside the ropes and sometimes you can look stoic or reserved. I'm at work, that's my office. This is definitely my greatest passion outside of golf. But yeah, I'm glad people get to see a different side of me. Welcome to PGA Tour The Cut, presented by Serve Pro. Hey guys, welcome to Colorado. This is one of my favorite coffee shops here in Colorado. It's in Silverthorne, which is a mountain town. Uh, can I get a tall coffee, please? And I'll do the sweet potato burrito. As you walk outside the backside of the coffee shop, you got the Blue River. I come out here and you just kind of get in the fishing mindset, sitting by the river, it's, it's pretty spiritual. Some people know I love to fly fish, but it's definitely my passion. With the sport we play, it's so mentally taxing. It's really good to have an outlet. And fishing for me, it's one of the very few things I can do where all I'm focused on is what I'm doing at hand. I don't worry about anything in life. I usually can't sleep a night before fishing. It's actually probably worse than a night before a final round of a tournament when you have a chance to win. Fishing, I get so excited because it's, it's like I know I'm gonna go do what I love. I always wake up, it seems about an hour before my alarm clock goes off. And usually I leave early because I'm like, I'm not gonna wait around, I just wanna get up there. When it comes to fishing, like you don't normally take out someone you don't know. It's kind of more like friends and family and Josh was nice enough to take me out and I've known Josh probably three, four years, met him through a mutual buddy. We end up hitting it off and just he and I on the river for like seven hours and had a great time. What up, buddy? Josh is me in fly fishing. And I'm Josh in golf. I know other athletes and famous people and, you know, he's just super humble and kind of grassroots and the fact that he likes fishing and, you know, I grew up playing golf as well. It was kind of an instant connection. Got plenty of weight. We'll go. We should be fine with the five weight. Yeah. For what we're doing. Rods are similar to driver shafts. So you would think there's not really a big difference, but at, definitely at levels where you're pretty good, you know a difference of like how it handles casting, how it's in the wind. This would be fun to try this out. It's gonna be a good day of weight fishing. Go see if we can catch a few fish. It'll be chilly. You never get sick of this view, honestly. It's like candy land for me. Just being here just makes me wanna get in the water. It's a great day to fish. There we go. Yeah, Toad. Let him do his thing. That's a brown, dude. Oh, it is That's a brown. A nice brown. Wow. Yeah! This is a pretty brown. This is awesome. It's the best. Woo! That's a nice fish. Let's go. My high school swing coach, Craig Coy, who lives here in Colorado, is a huge fisherman. He's super obsessed with it, and he was the one that kind of got me into it. And then as my mom got sick my freshman year of college, that's when he was like, hey, this is going to be your escape somewhere you can come and kind of be at peace, get away from everything. There you go, high stick it. And then just slow wrist set. Yep. Oh, yeah, baby. 
It's a different type of fish. It's a rainbow. When I'm out here fishing, there's something spiritual about being in a beautiful place like this, in the water. Sometimes you just stop and you just look around and you're just like, wow, I'm so fortunate. Those are the times I think about my mom. Sometimes you can get into a trance where you're kind of just reflecting on certain things in life. There's just so much that comes to fishing more than just catching a fish. And that's what I love so much about it. Now on the golf course, I can be my own worst enemy and um, can get pretty heated at times, but I'm not like that at all. I'm very happy-go-lucky, super easy going, and I don't normally get impatient or show frustration. It's almost like I'm two different people. I'd love to kind of mesh what I am off the golf course, on the golf course. I think I would have more success on the golf course. Vi har jo konge i Norge, men vi har jammen fått en konge i Mayakoba også, og selvfølgelig samtidig. En voldsom Victor Crush, Henrik. Absolutt, og vi har fulgt Victor Hovland i hans forberedelser i Mexico. To guys commentating from Norway, and it's Per Haugstrud and Henrik Bjørnstad. Henrik was the first Norwegian player to play full-time on the PGA Tour. It's cool that he's now commentating. Ja, Victor, han er favorittkøver mellom en av driveren. Det er jo god køll av det, til god gutten. Se, det å pegge opp ballen og shake i hendes, Henrik, det er ikke bare bare. Absolutt ikke, dette her er viktig, og vi får jo også et svar på hvordan nervene står til før turneringen her nå. Hvordan den tør å ligge? På one go blir den. Ligger den? Ja da, den sitter den, vet du. Og deilig. Ingen grunn til å riste på hodet her, Victor. They're pretty known to be pretty passionate back home when they're commentating. Nå skal det velges kølle her. Hvilken har du tro på, Henrik? Jeg vet ikke. Jeg håper på pøtteren, men blir det pøtteren? Det ble... Ja, det er pøtteren, vet du! Ble pøtteren! Ja, det er jo sikke mye kvelt pøttingstråken til Victor. Det ser ut som om han kanskje har lagt opp en liten videoduell her, Henrik. Ja, jeg tror det er svingteknikken til Tiger og Victor det står om. Hvem vinner? Hvem vinner? Hvem kan det være da? Men se da! Da tar han den også! Han begynner å legge Tiger også da! Han er beste mann! Han er gutten vår! Vår mann! Og det er jo ikke de store motbakkene her nede i Cancun. Det er mer eller mindre paddeplatt, men her er det et lite unaren som må forseres opp bakken. Og Victor klarer det til et slutt, og utenom fyra kommer og tar den! Ja, det var deilig. Ja, det er godt og varmt her i Mexico, og det er en nydelig køldoverføring. Og så er det det med av med handsken. Det er ikke bare bare med varme, fuktige hender, det. Et finger av. To finger av. Tre finger av. Fem finger av! Ja, da! Det er ganske da. Klarer det også! Klarer alt den gutten! Klarer alt, da. Og smilet er der, som alltid. Ja. Vår mann! Det er så godt å se. Han liker seg her nede. Han har fått en bra førsteputt opp her nå. Han skal konstruere seg på en trimeter som er nede. Så er det! Ja, ja, ja. Herlig tøtt, da! Men det er ikke vært en sterim å få betalt for. Ballen skal ut, da! Den er der! Nå flytter det! Ja, nå er vi der vi skal være. Er leken nå? Maybe not so unbiased, but... Yeah, I think they do a pretty good job. The man of the moment is this guy, Russell Henley. His last win was five years ago in Houston. You always have doubts of, if, am I gonna win again? I've had a lot of tournaments where I haven't gotten it done, and so this one's really special. And in dominating fashion, Russell Henley picks up his fourth career win on the PGA Tour. What a performance. It's just so hard to win out here. Everybody is so good and it's so competitive. It's so much fun to kind of see what you're made of and see what your game's made of and see if the hard work you put in has paid off, and that's kind of why we play. He's had some really, really strong years. He has some really consistent years. Henley's five seasons after his previous win include 17 top 10 finishes, and he held the 54-hole lead five times, finally converting in Mexico. Walking up 18, I kind of felt like I wanted to cry a little bit. Just so, so, so much happiness looking back at the times where I kind of choked. So it was just a lot of emotion thinking about how those moments have kind of, I'm still here, I'm still fighting. I just can't believe that I, I got it done.
out here on the driving range with the man here in Las Vegas. That's uh, Mr. Harry Hall. How you doing, man? Good, thank you. The unmistakable Harry Hall with that cap. Love this man's style. Can move it a long way. You've come from England over to UNLV. How, how has your game changed from Europe to the United States? Yeah, you know, I grew up on a course that was five and a half thousand yards long, and every par four was 300 yards, but you didn't really want to hit a driver because there was a lot of trouble around the greens. So I just spent all my life growing up chipping and putting, and it wasn't until I came to UNLV that I kind of had to learn how to, to hit it far and really be a ball strike. Like the ball was up there, right, in the States. Was it, was it guys were hitting more up in the air versus maybe down? I think speed is a natural speed. increment to, you know, having a higher ball fight. You know, the more speed, the, the higher the spin rates. When I finished UNLV, I was swinging it about 112. So I'd put on seven mile an hour probably just by getting a bit stronger and learning a little bit and playing the golf courses. But it wasn't until I turned pro and in February 2020 during COVID, went from 112 to swinging at 125. Wow. And That's a big jump. Yeah, big jump. Let's hit one here. This would be about one, 118. Stop, driver. OK. Little draw. Now, what'd that launch at, you think? 13? That was 13, yeah. yeah. 22 spin, somewhere in there? Uh, probably 24. That the more, land the more spin. <laughs> <laughs> the more spin for me, the, the straighter I normally hit it. OK, so you've got two drivers in the bag this week. Yeah, one, this is to draw it, um, and then a few tee shots on 4 and 16. and um, So you'll fade that? I'll fade this Let's one, hit yeah. one of those. It's got a little less loft, but it's the same length, same shaft, same swing weight. Um, Interesting. But yeah, I'll okay. cut it. So, so that was a big high draw. Now let's hit a little. Drip fade. Yeah. And that one's peeling off to the right. As you look back, what did you learn from the first weeks out here on the PGA Tour? You know, having the baselines within your own game, knowing what you do well. Yeah. And if I can hit some more fairways and greens, then, you know, my short game just through where I grew up and how good it is, I know that I can compete and win. Well, this is a good place to get it started, right? Place you know well, back home here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And I have no doubt you're gonna have a great rookie season on the PGA Tour. Thank, Thank you, Harry Hall, appreciate it. I would say that my golf game is kind of all designed around ball striking. I've always been a pretty good ball striker, and that's kind of something that I can feel like I can usually take week in and week out that I don't have to worry about too much. When the short game and the putter get rolling, I feel like I can get myself in a good spot come Saturday and Sunday. I'm a little high strung, honestly, but like I love being around my wife and my kids. I mean, they, I get so much joy out of watching my kids compete in athletics or going to school or whatever it is. There you go. Yeah, get all that dirt off. Oh, he likes it. Oh, my. When it comes to my, my kids, I get a lot more relaxed and easy on. Close and personal there, buddy. Yeah. Here, you want me to raise you up so you can reach this one? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh, look at that tongue. Yeah. Oh. Let me see it's coming to you. Is that awesome? Yeah. Nux. Smiles for snacks. <laughs> This proud husband and father racked up six top 10 finishes this season, Eric Barnes. They follow in the footsteps of so many incredible legends and stars in the game that got their start right here on the Corn Ferry Tour. You think it's gonna happen, but until it actually happens, you always wonder if it's gonna happen. It's one of those things for me, no matter if I play the PGA Tour for one year or 10, 15, 20 years, I'll always be able to say I, was, I played the PGA Tour and no one can ever take that from me to prove to myself that, that I can do it and I can play on the PGA Tour is just that inner goal that I've always had my entire life and it's something I get to live. And Barnes will continue his journey this week in Houston, the site of his first tour start in 2020, where he'll look to improve on his previous T38 finish. The thing I can't wait to, to do the, the most is to compete against the best players in the world and see how my game stacks up. Obviously, there's so many more perks and benefits and the money's better and it's a bigger stage and all that. But for me, being able to see how my game stacks up with the best players in the world is by far the most important thing to me.
a sensational play of Sam Ryder, and he's going to pay it off here with, yes, a little birdie putt. Even though I'm on the road playing a little bit, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Oh, yeah, he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. He's keeping that momentum going here. Sam Ryder's 25 birdies or better at the Worldwide Technology Championship at Mayakoba were the most for the week securing him $50,000 to a charity of his choice through RSM's Birdies for Love competition. I'm able to kind of just manage my time well and be a little bit more efficient, so it's encouraged me to play a little bit more, and it's obviously great to get off to a good start in the fall. Oh, no, that is perfect. <laughs> what a shot for Sam Ryder. With two events remaining in the fall, PGA Tour rookie Taylor Montgomery holds the top spot in the overall Birdies for Love standings. What a run for Scotty Scheffler. And yeah, this is an unbelievably quick ascent. In a matter of 56 days last season, Scotty Scheffler went from zero wins on tour to a four-time champion. And just three months prior to his win in the desert, the second runner-up finish of his career became a launching pad. Legends of the game honed their skills here and captured titles. It's only a matter of time before he gets that first win out here. Oh, yeah. He is legit. 62 sets the standard. What a round of golf. Great bounce back after a poor round one. I think anger can go two ways in the golf course. You can use it and get even more frustrated and more pissed off, and they start thinking negatively. And I use that anger today into a positive. Back to back. Scotty Scheffler now only a shot back of the lead. Man, isn't momentum a great thing in sports? Oh, things are starting to heat up here in Houston. It is Championship Sunday. The man who took his second 54-hole lead in his PGA Tour career is looking for his first ever victory on the PGA Tour. Well, this is aggressive. Scotty Scheffler with the driver. of a tee shot right there. Two feet of curve and it carried 301. You never know. I mean, that's the kind of shot that could possibly be yeah, hold. Like Just didn't quite have it at 100% today. This is 67th start. Still early on in his career, but we all know his potential. I haven't really felt like I've had too many close calls. I, d I haven't had many 54 hole leads. The only tournament I felt like I 100% should have won was Houston. I felt like if I just kept playing solid golf, I would have won that tournament. But outside of that, I just, I don't think I've put myself in position enough. And so for me, I'm trying to stay more focused on Thursday through Saturday. Maybe one more right here. Ted Scott and Scotty Scheffler figured it out. Scotty Scheffler is a tour winner for the first time. Come out here to play and compete, and winning is a lot more fun than finishing second. Having those couple of close calls is, is definitely frustrating. It doesn't take me very long to kind of get over things, though. I kind of live week to week, and those things are frustrating. They may motivate you a little bit, but overall, I just like competing, and I like trying to come out here and win, and so for me, that's, that's motivation enough.